The next topic we're going to discuss continues along with our analysis of various executor framework implementations and interfaces. And this is going to talk about the scheduled executor service. So before, and this was a couple weeks ago, we've talked about the executor interface. We've talked about the executor service interface. I just showed you how you could use a future task in the context of the executor service. And now we're going to talk about something called the scheduled executor service. And we're going to see what methods it provides and the various interfaces and classes that it involves. And we'll talk about some of the policies defined by the implementation of this interface called the scheduled thread pool executor. So first, what's the scheduled executor service in the first place? So it essentially is another variant of executor service. And it allows you to schedule commands that will run after a given delay. So you can say, you know, here's some code. Run this in a minute or 30 seconds or whatnot. And you can also say, uh, here's some code to run, and I want you to run this every five minutes. So you can have things executed periodically, and or you can say, here's code I want you to run uh, in the future. So you can kind of do both things. You can schedule it to run in the future, and then you can also schedule it to run in the future at some kind of rate. And uh, as we'll see, under the hood, it uses a bunch of other stuff, like futures and scheduled futures and delay. There's all these other interfaces that are used as part of its implementation. Here are the key methods that are important. Uh, notice all these methods we're about to look at accept so-called relative delays and periods as arguments, not absolute time. So what it means by relative is it means that it's relative to the moment when you call the method. Because under the hood, it's going to see what's the current time of day, and then it's going to add whatever delay that you've added, that you've designated as the uh, time delay. Two of the methods can be used to create tasks with various delays. And as you can see here, these tasks that you want to have called back after some period of time can either be two-way tasks if they're callables or one-way tasks if they're runnables. And the only difference is that callable returns a value. And as you can see, in both of these cases, for both callables and runnables, you get back something called a scheduled future. And a scheduled future is a future that also has a delay uh, interface inherited. So you get this delay method as well. So we're going to get back a scheduled future. And the main thing you want to be able to do with this scheduled future is typically, uh, you'll typically either cancel it, you use the future to cancel it, or you'll use the future to get the result at some point. If you schedule a runnable, then its get method always returns uh, null, because there is no two-way call for a uh, runnable. There's a whole bunch of clever design techniques that you need to do in order to cancel a runnable command. And I'll give you some examples probably next time on Monday when we talk about the timed memoizer class, which is a super cool enhancement and variation of the memoizer we just talked about that will time out the values if they're not accessed within a certain period of time. So that avoids sort of keeping them around forever. You, you time them out after a while. OK, uh, then there's also a couple of methods that can be used to schedule tasks to run periodically until you decide to explicitly cancel them. And you can see here that uh, one of the methods will be used to schedule the things at a fixed rate. And uh, so what you're doing here is you're saying, run this command, and I want you to run it every minute or whatever after this period of time. So you can give it an initial delay plus a period at which it's going to run. And it'll keep doing that until it's, uh, until it's canceled. If the call takes a long time to run, if, if the execution time of this command takes longer than the period, then the next execution will start immediately. But you've got to be careful with that, because you don't want to end up messing up your delays. Um, and then there's another method called schedule with fixed delay. And in this case, it's going to have an ex execution start after the delay time between the termination of one execution and the commencement of the next. So that'll say, you know, once the thing is finished, then make it delay this amount of time in order to be able to run it again. These methods return objects that can be used to cancel or check the execution status. That's the scheduled future. 
So that's the interface. Now, obviously, we have to implement this somehow. And mercifully, Java gives you an implementation out of the box. And that implementation is called the scheduled thread pool executor. And the scheduled thread pool executor is going to use a whole bunch of stuff under the hood. It's going to use a thread pool executor. It's going to use this thing called scheduled future task, delayed work queue, scheduled executor service, blah, 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 blah. And what you can do is you can actually have a pool of threads uh, in order to be able to run those things concurrently, which is kind of interesting. Or you could just have a single thread that runs in the background. So by default, the scheduled executor service interface is typically what you use uh, to access this. But if you take a close look at this, you'll see there's a bunch of other methods it provides that go above and beyond what are defined in the scheduled executor service. So there may be situations where you have to get direct access to this underlying thread pool executor, scheduled thread pool executor, if you need to do other things. There's additional policies, for example, that are added here to control certain behaviors and so on. For example, one of the policies is to determine whether or not to keep running existing periodic tasks, even if the executor itself has been shut down. So in some cases, you want the tasks to go away when the executor goes away. In other cases, you want the periodic tasks to keep running until you actually cancel them. So you can, you can set that policy if you so choose. That method is not exposed to the interface, but it's something that's exposed through the implementation uh, class that does that. You can also uh, decide whether to run existing delayed tasks when an executor has been shut down. So it's just either delayed tasks or periodic tasks. And then you can also decide whether the canceled tasks should be removed immediately from the work queue when canceled, or whether they could just be sort of canceled and then it removed at some point in the future. Um, for some reason, all of these policies are set to false by default. So if you want to enable them, you have to go and make these explicit calls in order to do that stuff. So it makes the class a little bit harder to use. OK, so that's basically the end of that overview discussion.